Good morning, church. It's Jordan, and I am here with a Monday morning devotional. I hope you were able to enjoy a refreshing and just amazing time uh, yesterday with uh, the church family and with family and friends just celebrating the resurrection of our Savior. Uh, it changes everything. Uh, and uh, I want to pray real quickly, and then we'll be uh, jumping into our devotional this morning. God, I thank you uh, that you sent your son. I thank you that he was obedient to the point of death and that uh, you resurrected him and you showed your power and his power over uh, death and uh, you gave us uh, a testimony uh, to uh, our future resurrection, our future uh, redemption uh, from death and from sickness and from all of the sufferings of this world. Um, I pray, Lord, that uh, as uh, your people, uh, we would be faithful and we would uh, pursue you even until uh, the end of our time, whenever that may come. In your name, amen. Uh, this morning, um, I am reflecting on the morning after Easter, uh, or the time after Easter. What happens um, uh, after Easter for us? So often we, we are a people of holidays, uh, people of religious holidays. We uh, gather together, we celebrate, we make a special uh, uh, moment uh, attached to uh, things like the birth of Christ, uh, to uh, Good Friday, his death, uh, to his resurrection, now on Easter Sunday. And then we go on, we go back to uh, normal. And so this morning I, I wanted to read to you uh, from uh, an encounter of Jesus with Peter that happened after his resurrection. Uh, but before his ascension into heaven and before the, the Holy Spirit was sent to the early church and the early church was put on mission. Uh, and so I want to read from John 21, verses 15 uh, through 19. Uh, John 21, 15 through 19. And again, the circumstances of this um, are uh, John um, is writing about uh, this encounter of Jesus with Peter um, after he has appeared to his disciples for some time um, and is now meeting with uh, Peter one-on-one. -on -one. When they'd finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus then said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said again to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep, or tend my sheep. Jesus said to him again a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, Jesus said, follow me. I think this is such an interesting passage, just period. I think there's a lot of, of richness to it. Uh, the fact that Jesus uh, would end the way that he began with so many of his disciples, with this call to follow him, um, I think is is very interesting. When Jesus was just a man performing miracles and he called people away from their careers um, and said to follow him and it seemed like uh, he was the victorious Messiah they could want, the, the commitment to follow him maybe had less substance and significance uh, to those early disciples in those first few uh, callings. Um, I'm sure that the Holy Spirit was present there and, and uh, was really uh, cementing that relationship uh, to make that call effective, but there is a special call, I think, here. Uh, Jesus has now been crucified, and he's now been resurrected. The disciples are now aware uh, that Jesus was not there simply to provide a, a military uh, conquest that would overthrow Rome and, and establish an uh, Israelite kingdom. They know now that when Jesus said to follow him, he was saying, follow me into suffering, follow me into death, um, and follow me into the redemption and the resurrection of, of uh, salvation through me. And so he ends this, this calling with Peter. He says, follow me. And I think there is a special significance for Peter and for the other disciples who, who maybe were listening at that time. Um, there's also a challenge to Peter. Uh, this man who denied three times, he is given a chance three times to reaffirm his love for Christ. Uh, and he's grieved by it. I think he, he saw the connection there. But I think uh, Jesus also... 
uh, promises him and says, then, hey, if you, uh, if you do love me, and you do follow me, um, you know, this is, is something that uh, I'm still going to give you the chance to do. Your denials uh, have not negated my, my call upon your life. And he gives John uh, three specific instructions each time that John, or Peter, excuse me, he gives uh, Peter three specific instructions each time Peter says that uh, he does love him. He says, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and then he says, feed my sheep again. And so um, I think for us as a church and for believers, I think there are a few things that I would, would call out. First and foremost, um, many of us will go through periods of life where we deny Christ. Um, we'll be in situations um, where, for whatever reason, we choose to act in fear. Uh, we maybe are ashamed. We are uh, maybe uh, less than willing to be a witness and to be holy when we know we're called to be holy because of what people around us are saying or doing. Um, and instead, we'll deny, uh, much like Peter. Um, and I think first for us, I would remind us that the call to follow him as his children is still upon our lives, even in those moments. Um, and there is a, a moment and an opportunity ahead of you for you to do what he commands and to follow him and then also to feed his sheep and to tend to his sheep. Uh, so be like Peter um, in those circumstances. You, you may look back and in, instead of looking at those circumstances where you denied your faith and love for Christ um, in your actions and in word and in deed, um, and instead of feeling shame about that, I would encourage you to follow him still yet. I think you'll still see that his faithfulness and his love for you uh, continues even in those circumstances. I also think there is a, a challenge here for us as a people. I think we're entering an age where our faith is no longer uh, going to allow us to be free with our faith, or we're going to be in a circumstance where culture does not allow us to be free with our faith. Um, like Peter, uh, Peter when he was young was able to go where he pleased um, and do as he pleased. Uh, but Jesus tells him as he grows old uh, that uh, he will be bound and then he'll be taken to uh, a death that he does not want for himself. And I think that's something we have to be mindful of as well. Uh, both individually and as a church, we need to be aware of the fact that um, the, the age perhaps where our faith was able to be lived out freely, um, both um, inside of our culture and globally, uh, American Christians have had a, a lot of freedom that era may be coming to an end. And we need to be uh, prepared as a church, and again, as individuals, uh, for the consequence of that. Our, our call to follow and our call to love and our call to tend and our call to feed uh, is, is not done simply because uh, the circumstances around us are, are more restrictive and are more binding uh, and, and maybe more unpleasant and may lead to suffering. Um, we have to be a people who look at Easter, we see the resurrection of our Savior, and we say, I will follow you, I love you, uh, no matter where this takes me, um, I'm going to continue to pursue this all the way to the end. So those are my encouragements for you this morning. Uh, first and foremost, um, uh, if you are celebrating the resurrection of Christ yesterday, uh, continue to follow the, the day after and the day after and the day after. Uh, get up and, and pursue opportunities to feed the sheep of Christ, to tend to the sheep of Christ. Uh, tend to his flock, uh, the people that he loves and he cares for, the people around you that he's put, uh, put you in community with. And then secondly, um, even as the challenges seem to grow, uh, don't lose sight of the fact that uh, we are to continue to follow him. Uh, Jesus' life and his willingness to follow God's call upon his life led to death and suffering, but it ultimately led to resurrection. And in that same way, we are to pattern and follow after him. Uh, again, uh, we, we may see that lead to suffering for us. We may see that uh, lead to uh, even death for us. Uh, but ultimately, we know that it's going to end in our uh, resurrection and our redemption uh, eternally. I love you all. I hope you're encouraged. Uh, go out uh, and share.